Good day, Green Island learners, and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You are tuned into your fourth lesson of Term 2 EMS Financial Literacy, and today we will be looking at the debtor's ledger. All right, learners, this is your final lesson for Term 2 EMS. As we always say, if you don't get the concepts the first time, just watch the videos again. All right, let's start with some revision. Let's revise the source documents and the journals used to record credit transactions. The duplicate invoice is the source document used for the DJ, where credit sales are recorded and the duplicate receipt is the source document used for the CRJ when debtors pay off their debts. So what is a debtor's ledger and what is its purpose? A debtor's ledger is a subsidiary ledger in which the accounts of various debtors are consolidated. Each debtor gets a unique number and the details of each transaction with the debtor are recorded in this ledger. Transactions are posted daily so that each day the account shows the precise amount that is outstanding, which is the balance. So if the debtor comes into your shop at any given time and wants to pay their account, the business will be able to quickly give an accurate amount. A debtor's ledger is a subsidiary ledger where the debtor is given a unique number and thirdly, the accounts are posted daily. Now that you know the purpose of a debtor's ledger, Let's look at the format of a debtor's ledger. Here is the debtor's ledger of Ikasi Kofu Company. Number one, you start with the business name. Number two, the name of the debtor. Number three, the folio number or ledger account number, which is unique to the debtor. In this example, the number is D1. Number four, the date of the transaction. Number five, details of the transaction. Number six, folio reference from where the transaction was posted. Number seven, the account is debited because an asset increases. Number eight, the account is credited because an asset decreases. And lastly, number nine, the running total or balance of the account. Each time a transaction is entered, it is either added for debit or subtracted for a credit from the previous line's balance. Okay, let's go through Ikasi Kofu Company's debtor's ledger once again. Post the following balance and journals to the debtor's ledger of T. Yonker. Let's look at the table behind me. You will always start with the balance as this is the money that the debtor owed at the beginning of the month. So in this example, the balance on the 1st of March 2022 of debtor T. Yonker was 3,450. After the balance has been entered, the journal transactions of T. Yonker should be entered. On the 7th of March 2022 in the DJ, Goods were sold on credit to T. Yonker of 1,525. This should be recorded in the debtor's ledger and be recorded on the debit side, which is the plus side because the debtors now owe our business more money. We should also remember that T. Yonker still owes us the previous balance, so you should add the balance. 4,975, which is 3,450 plus 1,525 because his debt increases. The second transaction is where Ikasu Kofu Company receives 1,200 Rand. This is due to a payment on T. Yonker's account on the 28th of March. This means that T. Yonker paid a part of his account and now owes Ikasu Kofu Company less money. In other words, his debt decreases. That is why you will then record this transaction on the credit side. And T. Yonker's new balance will then be 3,775 which is 4,975 minus the 1,200 Rand. At the end of March, T. Yonker owed Ikasi Kofu Company a total of 3,775 Rand. Let's quickly sum up what we've learned today. The DJ source document is an invoice which will be debited on the debtor's ledger, which will be added to the balance. Let's get this text on the screen so you can take it in carefully. 
The DJ source document is an invoice and will be debited in the debtor's ledger, which will add to the balance. Okay, next up is the CRJ source document, which is a receipt, which will be credited in the debtor's ledger, which means you should subtract from the balance. Okay, once again, let's get the text on the screen so you can read carefully. I'm going to leave this summary up and give you 30 seconds to write it down. Well done grade 9 learners, this marks the end of term 2 EMS financial literacy. Remember, if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's totally normal. Just watch the videos again and make sure everything sinks in. I hope to see you in term 3.